Friends, uh, Dean, sassy. sassy dietitian, she's a rock star, um, someone that I really respect in the nutrition world. We're actually have a conversation about Game Changers, the documentary, um, and so I most of my information is more opinion based than uh, science based. Um, I'll be honest with that for sure. But I thought it'd be really cool to have a conversation with um, with Laura because she knows her crap. So. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, we at least pretend to, right? Um, so I don't know how you wanted to have this conversation. I don't know where you wanted to start. If you want to go, like, because you said you had points from the. Oh yeah, I yeah. took notes. I literally Beautiful. watched the documentary. If mm -hmm. You guys haven't seen it? It's on Netflix. Um, don't believe everything you see. My favorite part is that it's by. Uh, it was directed by Jackie Chan and Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is like red flag number one because. <laughs> you're basically using Hollywood stars who have money and power mm. to create a movement and a, and a film that it was then also produced by James Cameron. Yeah. So of course it's going to be a well done film. If I had that type of money, this would not be a YouTube, this would be a full blown documentary yeah. of why you should never take your nutrition advice from a documentary. 100%, before we jump into the documentary stuff, I, I do want to note is that um, I, I have someone who's plant based that I work with you, just before we started this, you were talking about you have a person who's plant based also. Oh, I work with a lot of plant based yeah, so it's, and humans. It's not that it's not that we uh, hate plant based or or hate plant based people. Um, <laughs> but I don't hate anyone. But more, it's a conversation about what's optimal and what's yes. not, and yes. and like kind of like some of those personal convictions. And I think as coaches, it's it's our job to align ourselves with someone's more personal convictions and help them navigate through that. But so I, as a caveat, neither of us hate people who are plant-based or vegan or whatever else. Um, and um, yeah, if anything, I yeah. mean, anyone who comes to me saying that they have certain preferences, whether it's plant-based or, you know, I only eat fish or I don't eat eggs or whatever it might be. I try to optimize what the athlete does and make it better. And I think that it's because people come to me, maybe they don't like the taste of meat, that's yeah. fine. Maybe they, for, have, for ethical reasons, for religious reasons, there's so many reasons to be plant-based or to avoid certain foods. And so it's not a matter of, I don't, I don't look at you and say, oh, you're a bad person because you eat X, Y, and Z. It's like, I'm here to be the unbiased professional who helps you optimize what you're doing in your health. Who is secretly a little biased, but that's okay. <laughs> Aren't we all? We all, we, all are secretly, <laughs> we all have to be secretly biased, but as a practitioner, we're taught to be client-centered. So I, when a client comes that's to me- That's a really great way to say that. I mean, yeah. that's what I do. And so sure, I'm not personally plant-based and I always tell my clients that before joining in as I'm, when you work with me, I'm going to take your preferences and your goals in mind and help formulate the mm. best plan for you. And it's not gonna look like what I do. I mean, sure, I'm gonna have biases because I personally like to eat you know, meat and eggs and fish and all of that, but if you're telling me that you don't wanna eat that and you want to eat a certain way, I'm gonna make it work the best way for you. Yeah, for sure. So jumping into the film, there was a bunch of different mountaintops, there's a bunch of different like points that like jumped out to me that I was like, oh my gosh. But what was one of like the first things that jumped out to you other than you know production and all that kind of stuff, like content in the film, you're like, hmm, that's a red flag, or this actually doesn't quite make sense, or they might be manipulating this information as such. So one of the, they did a bunch of like one-off studies with like two humans. Like they would do it with those two college kids or two yeah. you know, guys, and they, would, they basically would say, eat one way this day, and then the next day eat the other, and we're going to do a test on you. And so obviously to those, to everybody watching in, the, to see such a huge change over one day, we have no idea, one, what the, the people were doing beforehand. Like were they eating, you know, pop, I think they were, they were eating like Popeyes the day before. Yeah, they, then, me they, they mentioned Popeyes and I, like, I, was, I was in pain yeah. when I saw that because I'm like, this is not right. me. This isn't even meat, guys. No. This isn't even a current conversation about meat and right. plant-based anymore. Right, you're not, you're no longer, right, it's not, it's comparing apples to oranges as opposed to apples yeah. to apples. And that was the hardest thing to watch is they're now, instead of using actual um, double-blind randomized control studies, which yes. are, yeah. which are peer-reviewed, mm -hmm. so they're, you know, studied and looked at from your peers and looking to make sure that the science is actually um, what it says it is. You're now just saying, okay, it would be like if a doctor came in here right now and took our blood and then said, okay, you can only eat X, Y, and Z until I take your blood tomorrow. That's not gonna show anything. Sure. It's sure, it might show 
that we have clearer blood, but it's because if they told us just to eat kale, you're probably gonna see changes. But then what if I ate grass-fed meat the next day? I mean, it's just so variable that you can't just do one point in time for two people. Mm -hmm. They've shown in science that you need a large sample size to to cut out any variables and cut out any you know factors that they can't control for. Um, and then they also need to do it over a longer period of time because one day is not long enough to show anything. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and there was a couple things that jumped out to me was like the athletes, like interviewing some of the athletes, one of which, um, well, they, they actually talked about carbohydrates being a better fuel source than protein and as a defense for plant-based, and um, that, 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 that got me, and I'm trying really hard not to be sarcastic and roll my eyes super hard because we already know carbohydrates are fuel, like protein, it's, it's, it's what's necessary to repair tissue, not to give your body fuel to do work. Right? Correct. So I don't know if you want to speak a little bit to that. Um, it's interesting because I find that most of my plant-based athletes have trouble getting enough protein in, and what they normally complain of is that they can't get to the body composition that they're looking to get mm. to. It's possible, but you normally have to take extreme measures. So you're doing a bunch of the um, plant-based meat options, like whether it's Beyond or Impossible or whatever, one of those on the market. You're using some type of protein powder, which is obviously a supplement form of food it's not yeah. actual food um, or they're just eating a ton and ton and ton of beans and quinoa and nuts and seeds and digestion also becomes an issue because when you're an athlete you don't have as much time to sit down and enjoy a meal because you're on to your next event so I find that most athletes they do they struggle with body composition because they're not getting enough protein because we know the protein ends up helping with lean body mass it's it, like you said it's not actually for yes it can help with some performance, um, but we all know that carbohydrates are what fuel sport. Sure. And so I, I, don't, I don't think that's a good argument. And I think that we do need a certain amount of protein in order to perform well. Yeah. And it, it is possible, it's possible to do it as plant-based, but um, I think it's really hard for most to do plant-based. Many of those athletes too were also fairly seasoned, right? So the, that, that was another thing, it was almost like out of context, which was a little frustrating, but all these, all these athletes had so many years, so many repetitions, like thousands and thousands and thousands of repetitions done a certain way. And here's the thing, we're not saying that you can't perform optimally um, on a plant-based diet. It's just really hard, right? It's just really, really hard. And so you're gonna have those outliers that perform really well. And that's also another thing, it's like, that's not fair to take that outlier and, and use them as a part of a test or use them as part of a, a, like we're gonna use this person to like prove that this works because that's not the bell curve. Like th those are the outliers on the side, right? Well, I also think that, and you can kind of probably play more into this, is something that I've always seen with athletes is that talent is talent. And so obviously training and many repetitions can, can move you from one tier to the next, but within a certain tier, nutrition can only help so much. Mm. Like for instance, I was a division one swimmer. I don't think I ever would have made it to the Olympic trial qualifier. Cause I don't, I just don't think that's in my genetics. I don't right. think it mattered how many hours I swam. Like my tier was here. The next tier was here. And so nutrition could push me maybe to the top of my tier, but nutrition was not going to push me to the next tier. Yeah. And so I don't know, I think that's part of it too, is like your bias in who you're presenting in this film of, okay, they were already gonna be good. And so they're improving their nutrition, got them to be better within their mm. tier, but it didn't necessarily push them to be in a different tier. Like they weren't gonna fall down to a, a worse level because they ate Popeyes. Right, and that's, that's a really good point because one of the things you just said was they improved their nutrition. And, and so the conversation in the film was not about, I mean, as far as I was concerned, it wasn't really about meat versus plant-based. It was really um, a higher quality food versus the traditional American diet. Mm -hmm. And I think that, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know, let me know what you think. I would rather people eat a plant-based diet that's really high in, in good quality foods than a traditional American totally. diet, right? Totally. Like it's removed the meat, but it still has tons of other good quality foods. Like yeah. that's moving the needle in the right direction. Totally. And that, that's something they didn't focus on. They didn't, I think the one meal, I forget which, uh, who they were testing, but the one meal they did, they had them eat like grass-fed meat one day and then uh, plant-based the next day. 
But the thing is, is like, what were those people doing beforehand? Mm. They probably weren't eating grass fed meat. They were like college kids. No chance that, you know, like, <laughs> what college kids? Is, There's some context that Yeah, like, they're probably, like, I remember being in college. What was I eating? Like, pizza and nachos? Mm. You know, I mean, had I improved my diet, yeah, I probably would have gotten a little bit better. Um, but that's what they didn't focus on is like, what was the quality of their diet prior to going plant based? And for many, I mean, you look at some of the, um, I forget what um, NFL players they were looking at, but the NFL mm, players, yeah. like, no chance they were eating all that good quality beforehand now all of a sudden they're going plant-based yeah. and they're seeing benefits because of course eating more plants more fruits and vegetables you end up lowering the inflammation in your body but you can also do that by just improving the quality and yeah. in a lot of research studies there's this thing called like healthy user bias yeah. and so they they you know so and so because they went vegan they are now you know they're I don't know they're lost weight they uh, improved cognitive function, whatever. I, I, I'm not explaining this well, but they end up being healthier because because they ate more plants, they also were moving their body more and they were sleeping more and they weren't engaging in activities that are unhealthy, like going to stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's like, what else in your life was changing? Because all of a sudden you now said, okay, I want to eat all plants. What else are you doing? Right, 100%. It's just like when you walk into a gym, I mean, I feel like people are just walking into the gym as a catalyst for them to eat a little bit healthier, go drink to, a little bit more water. Earlier, yeah. Exactly. And so it's like, what was it just because they ate more plants or is it because they actually changed the way they thought about their diet and lifestyle? They actually gave a crap yeah, yeah, as yeah. opposed to just being like, oh, well, I'm an athlete. I can eat whatever I want. Sure. Yeah. And I, I think that also, uh, and this might be something cool for you to speak into is, is as athletes age, the demand for protein actually goes down, correct? Um, not necessarily. Um, no, I mean, I guess it depends on the age. Yeah. But no, not necessarily. So fat is the slowest to digest. Correct. Uh, carbohydrates, the fast to digest. For the most part, yes. For the most part, generalization. Yeah. Protein. In between. Yeah, in between. Hard to digest, though. For no? most people, and as you age, it gets harder to digest. Because so, yeah. your stomach acid goes down. Okay. Um, so, yes. Also, it helps if you chew your food, which most people don't. I work with a lot of people on literally just chewing your food. And so, people who say they have trouble digesting protein, it's because we're scarfing down our food and we're not sitting down and actually enjoying our meal. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, so, and actually, digestion starts even before it goes in the mouth. So, if you actually think about bacon, you start salivating, and that's the beginning of digestion. It turns on all those kind of like digestive Yeah, like I'm already salivating stuff. thinking about bacon. So, it's, it's interesting because like Arnold Schwarzenegger, they use him as an example, but I think he's a perfect example of someone is like the amount of meat that he probably consumed over the course of his life was excessive, totally. right? And so that excessive amounts of protein can damage the digestive tract, right? And then as he aged, changing to a plant-based um, nutrition might have been like not a bad idea for him. Well, right, and I also think that in the bodybuilder world for so long, even now, some of the, um, the amount of protein I recommend for people is absurd. Yeah. And I think people don't realize that there, there's no, there's no good like high or low. Like you probably need somewhere in between. Mm. Like many athletes come to me after they have done, gone on certain macro programs, and you know, someone my size was put on 160 grams of protein. I don't think I've ever eaten in a day 160 grams of protein. Yeah. And so the that's the other problem is that you have people who are in the bodybuilding world or the sport world who think more is better as opposed to just finding like better is better. Mm -hmm. Like getting better amount and a better quality is better than getting more and as much as you can. Um, man, I th I, that's, that's a great conversation. I, I, people, people have a tendency to overeat protein, right? Like animal In proteins. the fitness world and the sport world, absolutely. Yeah. Um, what, what else? What was, I mean, I, I actually, I wanna, uh, I wanna dive into that, that conversation we talked about briefly before we started just kind of recording was just like, um, the uh, nocturnal erections and that kind of stuff. Um, and how, like, that's how they hook you in in that. Oh like, man, it's like this is this is this is great. But I don't want. I mean, it, if there's other things that you wanted to talk about before we jumped into that. Jump into it. So um, the 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 study was essentially it was like a it was a burrito too, right? Wasn't it a burrito? Uh, that might have been the burrito one. Yeah, yeah it was so, two college dudes, and they had meat one night and vegetables or plant based the next night. And they basically showed that with the vegetables, there was more nocturnal erections that occurred that than the night before with just meat. 
Yeah. But the thing is that makes great TV or it makes a great documentary, right? Of it does. What yeah, dude yeah. does not want to hear that? What female is with a dude does not want to hear that? What male with a male does not want to hear that? Like yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. Every, it's a win 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 win. And so of course they know that if they figure this out, it's gonna make good TV um, or good whatever Netflix. And the thing is, is that we don't know what the quality of their diet was prior to going in. Yeah. So it's possible that maybe just having two days of a better quality diet actually did them some good. Yeah. Maybe them actually, they were in a study, so how, how was their sleep compared to normal? Like, did they get more sleep and they, then they had two nights of good sleep? I mean, we just don't, there's so many factors that we just don't know. The, 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 whole, the whole film is, is lacking, lacking some context, like, like totally. broadening the scope a little bit, asking some deeper questions on like this side and this side and, and, and not being so kind of dogmatic or, or narrow, narrow right. scope. Right, and you and also have approach. to think of there being, they know what they're a part of. It's not a blind study. They know that they're being talked about with plant-based, how plant-based is better for them. So there's also this whole placebo effect that happens. And yeah. we talk about this a lot in sports nutrition. Placebo effect is not necessarily a bad thing if it creates good results. However, you can't then rely on it. You can't then come out and say, everyone should be plant-based and never touch meat again because you know we saw all these positive results. When these positive results may have just been placebo because they actually they thought that they were getting a healthier diet. Yeah. So you don't, we don't know, there's not enough research to show. Um, and we also don't know any genetic components that are coming into play. Like I think there truly are people who are meant to be plant-based, like their genetics just mm -hmm. predispose them to, to do better on that type of lifestyle. Yeah. I've, have, I've had clients who say that meat turns them off. They just don't feel good when they're eating it. And I have other clients who are the, the exact, opposite, exact opposite, who say like, I, if I don't eat meat in the day, I feel terrible. So I think there's also that going on. It's like people are so individualized that we cannot make this claim that everybody should go plant-based. Yeah. I think, yes, well, here's the thing. This is a whole nother tangent, but plant-based really irritates me because I feel that I'm plant-based. I eat a ton of fruits and vegetables. <laughs> yeah, I know where you're going with this. Yeah, and yeah, it's just yeah. like, it makes me irritated because I'm like, okay, you're basically just trying to cover up because vegan is kind of, you know, gets a bad reputation. Mm. So they're looking for a better way to say vegan, to include more people and get more people to invest in this type of yeah. diet. And so I'll I I'll tell you what, plant-based, that term sounds way better than 100%. vegan. hundred percent. And I think that a lot more people can be considered plant-based if they can say, okay, well, I also have fish and I also have eggs and I yeah, also yeah, have, yeah. you know, whatever else I want to include in my diet. But, you know, I'm having fruits and vegetables every meal and my snacks are, you know, carrots and hummus as opposed to chips and, and so yeah. And so I heard someone actually call it plant forward the other day and I was like, okay, like if you're someone who is like me, who still eats meat, you can, you're more plant forward. So your diet is a lot of plants, a lot of fruits and vegetables, but you're not vegan or plant-based. It's all, it's all semantics. It's all like, however you want to say it in order to make a buck on people. I was like, going to say, this sounds unnecessarily complicated. So, it's so complicated. Um, I, 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 for me, it's, I, I don't really get into nutrition much at all. I mean, it's not my lane. It's not my scope. Um, I have respect for people who have made that a huge part of their life. Um, it is it is not mine. But getting back to the sleep quality in general, if, if you're eating a, a ton of meat, and especially if you're not chewing your food, we talked about all that stuff earlier, um, it's, it's just gonna, it, the same reason you don't go and do a, a bajillion burpees or eat a chicken breast and do, do a bajillion burpees, you're gonna, like, you're gonna feel so heavy. Right, so you go to bed, you sleep, you have a chicken breast in your stomach, you have a steak in your stomach, all the blood's gonna be diverted to your stomach, or not all of it, but much of the blood's gonna be diverted to your stomach from other peripheral, not essential organs, AKA dudes, your junk. Um, but that, so, I mean, I would suggest to anybody to go give it a shot and just learn a little bit about themselves, just kind of pl play with how your body responds because eating meat or eating before you go to bed in general is never really a good idea. It's gonna interrupt your sleep quality, right? Yeah. Depends on the person. Depends on the person. I love that word, depends. <laughs> but, um, like I actually have clients who they eat a bedtime snack and it's not like a pint super of ice heavy. Cream. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it's like an apple and peanut butter and they actually have better sleep quality. And it's just dependent on the person, their activity level, their genetics, their cycle, everything. Between. I love that. That's a great answer, actually. Um, but being heavy before you go to sleep, we don't. We, nobody wants that either, right? Right. I think there's a huge difference between eating a, you know, I don't know, a McDonald's meal and eating a, an apple or a banana. <laughs> or even a steak before you go to bed. Or a steak. Yeah. Um, it's also, you know, what. Ideal. 
what's the quality of your steak? What was the serving size? Yeah. Like, did you actually chew your food completely? What else did you eat with it? I mean, there's just so many factors that are not taken into consideration, and it was just watching this movie was infuriating. Yeah, you know, that's, that's another really great conversation, too, because uh, the, towards the end of the film, they start talking about the environment and all the other kind of stuff, which um, I, I'm all about. One of the guys that I work with specifically, he is a vegan for that reason. Like, it is extremely important to him. He um, is very conscious of, of recycling and all that kind of stuff. So I'm like, I love that, I respect that, I, I wanna honor that. Um, however, you, if you wanna respect the environment or respect animals, you don't necessarily need to be vegan, right? Like, right. you can, you like, meat quality, uh, talk a little bit about that. Just like the difference between like meat quality in something that is like hormones free, free range, like all that kind of stuff opposed to that. Well, I think that's that's the point that people miss is that we don't necessarily need to go, everyone doesn't need to go vegan in order to protect the planet. Certainly you can. If that's something that you're passionate about and you really feel feel a certain way, you're allowed to feel that way and you're allowed to act upon it. But I think what we're missing the mark as a bigger society mm -hmm. is why aren't we promoting better and healthier animals. And so there's this whole push for regenerative agriculture, and it's basically going back to the way that agriculture was meant to be, yeah. and the way that animals are raised on the farm, and they're rotated through fields, and it actually is a more healthy, and I believe carbon consuming, and so instead of carbon, carbon emitting process, um, and so it actually can form carbon sinks. Now, I am not the expert in this. Um, Diana Rogers is a dietitian that is really passionate about this. She's mm -hmm. in Massachusetts, has her own farm. Um, so she pushes stuff about this all the time. So I would recommend people look into her. Um, but there's this whole community out there that's trying to push better meat. So not, not eating meat, but instead of eating the classic conventional meat that's you know, the chickens or have, you know, how many chickens in one coop and the cows who are just basically live in a stall their entire life and fed grain their entire life. Instead of, you know, supporting that side of agriculture, yeah. why not support that side of agriculture that in upstate New York, we actually have a lot of. We're very lucky to be in a, an area of the country that has a ton of farming land and a mm. ton of grass fed opportunities, um, you know, free range chickens, people have backyard chickens um, and supporting that type of meat is far better because those animals tend to have higher quality meat. You know, it's, I mean, it's kind of um, near to my heart, especially because my family, there's a lot of farmers in my family, or it was. There was the, the farm that my, my father and my grandmother grew up on was 170 acres, and one of the things that you said, they rotated fields, fields for what they were growing as far as if they were growing corn or vegetables or whatever else, and then year to year what they were doing with the cows, like the cows were rotating and all that kind of stuff, which I thought was super cool. Um, but the quality, like all the cows had names. You know, and, and they were raising them for, they were milk cows, and then when they kind of like ran their life cycle, then you know, they, would, they would try to sell them for meat and that kind of stuff. So the, the connection, the relationship with the animal, the respect for the animal, the treatment of the animal is so different for these smaller, um, smaller local farms. And then these, those farmers uh, and those farms are not, they're not wealthy people, right? Like they're, they're, they're people that are probably uh, middle, low class, blue collar, working their butt off, um, respecting the field that they're in. And I think that that's a really um, honorable pursuit and we can do a lot of good by actually supporting those people with our dollar. And I mean, that's, that's something that's important to my wife and I and that's, that's what we try to do with, with our money. But also, um, I would love to hear what you have to say as far as meat quality versus um, vegetable quality. And if you had to pick one or the other, um, yeah, mm, mm. Um, and I know it could depend, right, on Always. the person, but like, <laughs> but I wanna hear some of your thoughts and like pros and cons, and if you had to lean in a certain direction or suggest a certain thing to one person or the other, what would you say mm. um, if you had to push people, I want you to focus on, you know, Cleaner, right. cleaner, better meats. Uh, well, it's interesting. I actually saw someone post today a breakdown of what 50 grams of protein looked like between, I think it was bison, peanut butter, and broccoli. And for bison, I think it was like, I'm gonna do this disservice. I wanna say it was six ounces. Mm, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, six ounces. So it's about seven grams, six to seven ounces, seven grams of protein per ounce of meat. Mm -hmm. Then you have um, broccoli, and I think it was, 
it was something absurd. It was like 80 ounces of broccoli to get you 50 grams of protein. And then peanut butter, it was like, I forget how many ounces it was, but it was almost 1,500 calories. Yeah. So whatever it was, it was actually more calories in the peanut butter and the broccoli to get you to 50 grams of protein. And the only reason I say that is because people look at something like bison or grass-fed meat and they say, oh, it's really expensive. But per ounce, you're getting more protein, which is more filling and more satisfying and helps with lean body mass and body com composition. And it has a, it's very rich in vitamins and minerals if you're getting a good quality meat. So now per ounce, you're probably not paying nearly as much because you don't have to eat nearly as much mm. to get the same effect that you would get from peanut butter and broccoli. So you end up having, yes, I think broccoli is a great thing. I think that if you can digest it, it has a ton of vitamins and minerals, but you have to eat so much more of it to get the same type of protein value and probably vitamins and minerals that you would in a good source of meat. Yeah. So while yes, a pound of meat looks expensive and you know, a head of broccoli might only be $2, you have to get how many heads of broccoli now to equal that pound of bison. Yeah. So I think that if you do eat meat and you eat it in a sustainable manner, I think that it's probably more bang for your buck if you're getting the good quality and you're able to digest it and a lot of other factors. But I would say meat, fish, protein, that is animal based is going to be far more bang have give you far more bang for your buck with vitamins, minerals, and protein. Yeah. So, oh man, I we could have this conversation forever, um, but I don't. Nobody's going to sit here and watch this for uh, no. <laughs> 90 minutes. Um, so I guess let's 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 try to maybe summarize or or cap it off, or even if there's some things that you wanted to talk about uh, that we didn't so far. Um, but kind of summarize some things, cap it off. Um, I think yeah. one of the major things is that you have to remember talent is talent and elite athletes are going to get to the top mm. no matter what, you know, the cream rises to the top. And I truly believe that yes, nutrition helps them get the 1% better to get on top of the top. But you have to also remember like they're also training for this, right? They're in the NFL, their job is to do this. So now to, use what they're doing and say, okay, the whole population and the whole world should follow it, isn't necessarily true. Yeah. Um, you also have to look at the studies that they use and the people who are a part of making the film. Almost, actually, I think every doctor that they used in that film is plant-based or vegan or sells some type of vegan product. Yeah. And so obviously that is a conflict of interest. They were not biased in what they were presenting, which, you know, that's that they're allowed to be not biased, but I think when they're presenting the data, they have to be unbiased and they weren't unbiased in that, in that sense of, you know, science. Um, so those are two major things. And then I think you have to remember that everybody's different and it's okay to be plant-based. There's nothing wrong with going plant-based, but maybe not, not nothing wrong, but anyway, it, it's okay. And it's okay to eat meat. And I think the fear mongering around diet is what drives me crazy mm. because there's a reason that I don't have any like sexy challenge named after me. And it's because there's no, the, there's no, this. This is a great conversation. Right, there's no one diet that fits all. So we can't have these documentaries trying to fear monger people into yeah. doing one thing or another, because it's just not the way the world works. Yeah. So it, as soon as you get rid of dogma and like narrow scoped ideas, methods, practices, you can no longer package it in an ebook. Right? And it's like, oh, I'm selling my freaking 30 day ebook like for fitness. If you do these things, you're gonna be in the best shape of your life. This is patent, like Dean Lieber, super cool, super top secret. Nobody knows what I've, all this cool stuff I'm doing, but if you buy it for 10 bucks, right. you will yeah. know, right? Yeah. The same thing with nutrition, it, it, but it just doesn't work that way. It yeah, just people, doesn't work that people, way. I think it's human nature to want the quick fix and want to want the answer. Yeah, absolutely. And normally the answer, this is really deep. The answer is in, within yourself, right? If you can trust, if you can actually find what works for you and trust your body enough, you will find yeah. what your body wants. Now, when you're confused, when you spiritual. reach out, yeah, but when you, when you actually reach out and have a coach or a nutrition, well, a dietitian, I should not say just nutritionist, um, you help them actually get to the oh, root of it all. Well, so people know, people know my stance. Um, but I think you can actually, you can actually work with a practitioner who can help you find out what works for you. Absolutely. And what they do, what I do with most of my clients is we figure out what's actually working for them. And sometimes I'm normally pulling out what they already know mm -hmm. and I'm just making it known to them and I'm making it better for them, work, work better for them. I, I, lo I love that because one of the things I tell my clients is that you, you, you already have the answer. I'm like, you have the answer. I was like, I'm just trying to like 
find it in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And like we're, it's creating a dialogue and having conversation. But ultimately, I love this because you kind of touched on it, is like it's creating alignment for that person. Maybe that person's values are not gonna be your values, they're not gonna be my values, they're not, like everybody kind of values things a little bit differently. Right? Some people, family is super, super important for them. Some people, family's not important at all. It's more about like connection and relationships. Um, and your life is gonna reflect what you value. And, and then for, for coaches, our job is, is to help people align themselves with their values. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that is plant-based. Sometimes it's better education. Sometimes it's um, understanding what healthy decisions look like in general, right? Put down the potato chip, eat a banana chip. I don't really know. Like something simple, right? Something to simple. Stop watching Netflix documentaries. <laughs> or just stop Literally. doing that at all. Um, but I, I love that. I think that's fantastic advice. Um, I don't know if you have any, any, any closing thoughts, you brilliant dietitian, you. Be careful who you get your nutrition information from yeah. because James Cameron, Jackie Chan, and Arnold Schwarzenegger are <laughs> maybe great actors, but. Arnold is not a great Okay, actor. yeah, right. Not even great actor, but like. He's an amazing this is action whole, star, though. Stay in yeah. your lane. I'm, I, I mean, this is our attempt at producing a James Cameron film right here. This is it. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. I'm not splicing or editing anything. <laughs> but it's so true. Like, it is right, like it we're is. staying in our lane. Like, we're talking about what we're experts on. We're not going to put this big production on. Yeah. They, they need to do that. I think they need to honor and do the same thing. I, and I love that because I have had a bunch of people ask me questions about this and about this documentary and everything. And, and and a lot of it is my personal opinion, like what I, what I know what, and what I think. And I'll be honest with that. And that's part of the reason why I asked Sassy to come on and come on. I mean, like we're out of the we're out of the, we're out of the basement. We're we're here. Uh, we're hanging out and we're just having a conversation. And I'm you know, super super grateful for that. Real quick before we go, um, education. I'm a big fan of educating people. Difference between a dietitian and a nutritionist. Dietitian uh, is an actual certification. You have to get four years of accredited undergrad, and then you have to go on to 1,200 hours of a dietetic internship, um, where you have all 1,200 hours of supervised practice by other dietitians and practitioners, um, and then you must sit for a board certified exam, and you have 75 continuing edu education credits every five years. Wow. Okay. A nutritionist is anybody who wants to call himself a nutritionist. Boom. And that's the difference. I'm a nutritionist now. <laughs> yeah, any, <laughs> literally anybody. Anyone can call themselves that. There's a ton of certifications out there that can be really good for the betterment of your own education, but mm -hmm. not what I would not consider good enough to help others with yeah. their nutrition. And I've, asked, I've actually asked you that exact question. I've been like, hey, can you send me just for my own personal self-development and growth so I can have more context for mm -hmm. coaching? Um, the extent of my nutrition coaching is literally uh, put the potato chip down and eat a banana chip. More than that, go have a conversation with someone that knows what they're talking about. Um, I think that was awesome. Thanks for sharing your, your information, your wisdom, um, your background, your experience. Um, she's a rock star. Uh, if you, I was say, if, well, I was going to say, if you know me, then you know Sassy. If you know Sassy, you probably, it doesn't necessarily mean that you know me. She's like super famous on Instagram. No, not really. <laughs> uh, I don't know, you're over the 10K mark for sure now, 12, 13? 18. 18? That escalated quick. It does. It just like snowballs. Oh my gosh. I think I have uh, 1,300. Hey, that's great. Followers. You know what? I, don't, I really don't care. Does, no. I'm not going to lie. I mean, not that I don't care, but I'm not in this to be, I actually heard someone say this and I thought they put it perfectly, is that I'm an expert with influence. I am not an influencer. Mm. And that's oh, what that's I- That's really good. That's what I aim to be. I'm an expert with influence. I'm not here to just, whatever someone sends me, sell you. Instead, I'm here to educate you, maybe entertain you, and then if I happen to influence you, I influence you. Cool, love it. Sassy, thanks so much. Yeah. Boom, enjoy. <laughs>